Hello, I'm Colleen Bergeron. I'm an intuitive life coach. Today I'm going to do a discussion on clearing the chakra system. Most of us in the internet age have been touched by the word chakra somewhere reading about our personal energy and vibration. I learned about these energy centers by looking inside myself with guidance before being tempted to use the internet age to define what I know and feel about them. I discovered that we hold residual energy that might not be ours in and around ourselves and that sometimes using a phrase time and again can indicate what we need to clear. For an example, stating that you're pissed off or that someone's a pain in your butt, offering left-handed compliments, using statements like F this and F that ass and other key words that indicate genitalia can indicate body parts and sexual function. Sometimes journaling how you feel about a specific event is the essence of showing you exactly what you personally need to clear by the adjectives and the negative emotions that you choose to express about the event. I can only change myself. We also hold energy from old etheric cords and ties from past failed relationships. These are indicated by not clearing vows, ties, commitments, promises, pacts, and failed agreements that we have not resolved in these specific areas. We may also hold visual reminders of situations to prevent us from doing something or walking blindly into a similar situation. These are from learned experience of pain and our victim energy. Letting them go frees us from the marionette action they produce. You will not remove the cords of love that you share that are real, only the negative ones. You can use a Reiki or a holistic energy provider, light meditation, call in archangels, or any other reference source and ask for help and let them all go. If you don't believe this is happening, let me ask this. Have you ever touched a hot stove, a pan, or an electric fence? What reaction do you feel when you think about that? Those actions that cause external pain send an electrical impulse to our spinal cord through our nervous system and cause us to withdraw our hand from danger. The feeling or memory of that event is sent to our brain for future reference, kept in a little filing cabinet area of reactions. And the future trigger becomes the memory of the incident, how you felt and your reaction becomes faster. Trauma does the same thing, it's victim energy. These are fear-based memory reactions and they cause gadgets and cords for future reference to prevent them within our aura. The first rule of thumb is to learn mindful speaking. This is positive speaking. I don't mention anything or try not to about my own body in reference to anger. If I do, I clear it immediately. Anger is a negative energy with a level of about 150 per the scale of consciousness. This would indicate a block specific to a location in your own body. When you're angry, you only hurt yourself because I don't know anyone that will accept that energy from you and it'll become bound to your own body until you let it go. The reason it would indicate this is because my vibrational frequency is above the level of 500, which is the level of love according to the scale of consciousness. I create this space by clearing negative learned fear-based beliefs and emotions, all of the definitions that I gave them and the reactions from my energy and filling in with positive energy providing statements. Since learning about the chakra system, I have also learned to use a method of muscle testing with a crystal pendulum to check the system out and I can clear mine within minutes add light and energy where it's needed, and move on. 
I recognize the subtle differences in the motion and the sway and the force of the spin and the direction of the spin while perceiving each individual chakra in my space of energy. It's influenced by the slightest motion change detected in my own arm and hand that affects the outcome answer for me. I can see the chakras in color. It doesn't always match the chart images that you would find on the web and the graphs provided by Dr. Google. I'm an artist. The imagination and perception of my space has always been my energy. Because this is right for me does not make it right for everyone. It takes practice to perform and it just so happens that seeing is my personal clairvoyance. This is the fundamental base for my light meditations. I pull the energy from 100% pure source white light down through the system, ground it, and bring the energy of earth, which is mother's love, pink, warm, loving, supportive energy, back up from the earth and expand it from my personal heart center, thus creating the illusion of infinite light in a figure eight. Don't be afraid to be powerful. The first myth I'm going to bust is this. You have more than seven chakras. They're everywhere. They're infinitely changing and evolving around your energy space. There are seven major chakras that are attached somewhat to your physical energetic body through energy center, centers in this living plane. These chakras correlate to auric space around your body like an energy hologram. Feelings, judgments, and thoughts all reside in this space. I visualize my auric field like a large kite-shaped space around me because some of the chakras are interconnected and overlapping to everything else to make that connection stronger. The reason is this. Light is everywhere. It not only illuminates the mass you see and the room where you're seated, but it's in the space between you and the obje objects that you can see. You are never actually separate from light energy because that seemingly blank space is filled with molecules and particles that conduct light. Atmosphere is not empty space. The reason I let negative emotions go, my original energy did not know or understand the definition of negative belief. They were learned as I learned to become human from my caregivers. My caregivers taught me through a system of response therapy. If I repeated what they showed me, I received a positive response of love and happiness. If I did not, I received a negative response. This causes us to learn negative patterns by definition. Our predecessors, scholars, and mentors all taught us our letters and numbers which make up words and give value to objects and define those words, values, amounts, and objects for us. I did not know what fight or flight reaction was until it was shown to me as a response when I learned pain and fear in order to prevent it. It's a reaction. I did not know what guilt and shame and judgment were until someone taught me and defined that for me. I did not speak. I did not know language, letters, or numbers. I learned all of them by the response I received because of them. They're not the energy of what is real or what I should believe about myself. I brought the energy of love or higher when I chose my body in this life here and now. This is what's real for me. Higher vibrational frequencies are what appeal to my energy, which are the energies of joy and happiness at 540 and above and gratitude, which is over 900. One can use a simple chart to check what their energy vibration is currently. I use the scale of consciousness as a guide, but I have my own pie chart that I use to check my energy with a pendulum. I also use it to check the energy values of statements that might add to those values. The idea is to raise my personal vibration. I want it as high as I can hold it. I did measure these statements as best for my energy. So chanting or repeating any of these will help 
Raise your personal vibration and please choose the one that you resonate with. I love. I am grateful and thankful of. I am grateful and thankful for. I bless you with pure love and light. I am enough. I am the light, the light I am. The last statement held the most significant value for my energy by adding a thousand immediately for a space of time when I stated it out loud. Explaining chakras. I'm going to start with the light. The light represents our source of energetic power. This is your God source, higher power in collective consciousness. For me, this represents not only my source, but my guides and angels and past ancestry that have entered that energetic space. The light is a collective around 300 feet over your head at all times. When I began this process, I practiced connecting to that light hourly. I set a timer on my iPhone, stopped what I was doing and took five minutes to make sure I was connected and expanded. After practice, you can ask me, are you connected? And I can say yes in moments because it became a way of life for me to know this space. Repetition is your answer. I have listed what I know as my colors of the chakras, but this is just a guide and individual as each of our own fingerprints. The color representation is not always consistent. If your colors are all brown or red, or seem to ask for colors that are not listed, that's what your energy needs right now. It's okay. It's your energy fingerprint and as unique as yours are to mine. The only similarity would be they're on fingers. Each line and DNA structure is different. I didn't learn from an image produced on the web or learn to make my energy somehow wrong if it didn't match someone else. I learned by looking inside and using my own energetic guidance to ask what my energy needed and so will you. So the first chakra I'm going to discuss is the soul star. This is visualized as a large globe shaped object, white to gold. It's referred to also as our stellar gateway. This is outside and above your physical body. In my personal experience, I found there's a row of additional chakras, like an antenna corresponding to my auric and astral planes above this space that lead out out from the earth into the astral planes and universe as we expand. Try not to define and limit your energy as ending because as you clear and expand, you will find more relative to your personal energy. It is, however, your connection to the light and your higher source. We are all different and unique. The space of the soul star is referred to as the seat of the soul. Once awakened and light is added to it, this allows the soul to ascend beyond human ego. This allows people to experience a more enlightened, spiritual, joy-filled and healthy physical existence. This area is beyond where we try to rationalize ourselves out of things that our intuition told us were our truth. Ego represents learned behaviors and beliefs. The soul star is your connection to your higher guidance and true spiritual existence. It is the origin of our auric field connection. This rests anywhere from three inches above the crown to three feet overhead. I see mine like a brilliant disco ball rotating above my head about three feet. The next chakra is the crown chakra. This is visualized as royal purple or violet. The crown is originated from the pineal gland and the central nervous system. This guides our path to enlightenment and spiritual transcendence, understanding and consciousness. This is our high connection to the divine and our divine guidance. It rotates like a huge open flower at the crown of our head and connects our body to the soul star. Fear, anxiousness, depression, and anger shut down or limit our connection to the divine guidance. And this is the reason that we release and clear self-limiting emotional beliefs. 
let go of dis-ease and things that cloud your mental clarity like headaches and neurological disorders. Allow the light to pass through and expand that area. Open it up. The next chakra is the third eye. This is in the center of your forehead. I visualize it as an indigo, cobalt purple, or a dark blue. This is our truth expressing who and what we are. This is the connection to intuition, awareness, and understanding. Our higher guidance. This is where we might see our truth beyond the body senses, including the psychic sense of awareness. This is the seed of our creative imagination and our knowing. This guides our endocrine system and the autonomic nervous system. Allow the light to pass through and expand the areas. The next sections are actually interconnected. The ears which are just in front of our actual ear space, around the temple area, and you might be able to feel that space if you hold your hand about an inch in front of it. This is where you hear your truth and communications. Blocks might be indicated by not listening or talking over others, not allowing participation in conversations and discussions, and it's blocked when we speak out and the need to be right, but don't want to listen to someone else's opinion or response. The throat chakra is located right in the center of your throat. It's a robin egg blue representation. This is the seat of your communication where you can know and speak your truth. Healing and creativity through speech and articulate expression. Art and music is communicated through here. So is writing. This is why it's important to be authentic and mindful with truth and positivity in your word. This is the seat of your truth. It guides the thyroid, parathyroid, your yin-yang, male-female balance, ears, sinuses. It can also be shown as off balance through repeated allergy problems, sinuses, sore throat, laryngitis, difficulty hearing or breathing in any of those areas. It is our seat of communication. The next level down is the high heart. This is a pink or a green visualization. This is a space in the center of our chest high up, where we share a love connection with the source and guidance. It offers balance and connection with the universe around us. It's actually linked to the heart, which is just below and to the left of the center, which is also a pink green space. This is our balance and love connection. Expressing compassion, ego, hope, and positive attitude. This is the, the seat of true forgiveness emotional balance, love for ourselves and for others. This is connected directly to our God or our higher power. This is the seat of our heart, lungs, lymphatic and immune systems and regulates our blood pressure and circulation. This is affected by stress. One of the best ways to open a closed heart is through sharing love with a pet or a hobby that we don't feel threatened by, where we're not judging it. Love is the essence of who we are and the energy we came into this living plane of existence with. Nobody takes it from us. It's always part of our essence. It's a vital source connecting us directly to the light, the sharing, trust, coping skills, and balance. It never ends. We build walls from the inside preventing our connections. Chanting I love actually helps open that space, especially when you start believing what you're saying. The next one down would be the solar plexus. This is a yellow or a gold chakra just below the diaphragm and just above the navel. This is the center of our energy and vitality, our willpower, desire and power, personal authority, inner strength and self-control. 
This regulates conformity and our purpose represented here on this earth. It also guides metabolism, motion, and emotions. This is your body's battery, your gut instinct, gut intuition, and sight. This includes things that inc include everything in our GI tract and our digestive tract. Problems are indicated by diseases of those areas and digestive difficulties, nausea, and abdominal pain. This causes that tight feeling right around your stomach when you feel fear or stressed. This is the seed of our fear-based beliefs that we have learned in difficulties with self-control, efficiency, purpose, direction, need to be perfect, mental willpower, and anger. This includes all disorders within and the element of iron. That chakra I see as like a yellow or a gold. The next one down is the sacral plexus. This one is orange. It's located in our low abdomen around our pelvis. This is the seat of relationships. Relationships with our family, relationships with our loved ones, sexuality, intimacy, expressing emotional and sexual needs, and sensual desires. This is where we hold the beliefs on betrayal and trust. The organs involved are the reproductive system, your gonads, urinary, including your kidneys, and it's affected by uh, the sense of taste and blood sugar. Blocks can indicate problems with intimacy, problems with letting go, emotional clearing, warmth and desire. They would include shame-based emotional reactions and problems with hydration. The best way to keep this area clear is to cultivate self-care and nurturing habits, and those include water. The next chakra is the root. This is represented by a ruby color or a red. This is right at the base of your spinal cord. This is the seat of being present here and now, in this earth, in this plane, in this existence and lifetime. Disassociation and thoughts of not wanting to be here is a block in this area. It is the center for grounding and security, knowing and being supported and knowing and feeling safe. It supports survival, primal energy, taking care of others, taking care of yourself, simple stability, balance, awakening. This guides the feelings of anxiousness and dyslexia or other things that are problems with grounding um, on this physical plane here and now. This includes chakras connecting through the legs, hips, knees, feet, pelvis, and tailbone always connects through the chakras for stability. Fear of sexuality, openness, closeness and intimacy with others, negative avoidance of moving forward such as procrastination or inability to take that first step toward change. Behaviors all show blocks in this area. The next one is the Earth Star. This is represented by a brown or a black, like a solid chakra. It's actually not within our physical, physical body. It's called a super root. It connects us to the Earth Collective. This is the key connection to the past life in this space, karmic pattern and DNA origin, and it's responsible for making us feel connected to our own energy and the universe. This is the etheric connection to the earth and not inside your physical body. It's about three feet under your feet. This is the seat of your energetic connection with the earth and the universe. This is where we're grounded here and now on this living planet. This connects us to the source energy from the mother earth and its own vibrations. This is where you learn to feel balanced and connected from. Once you learn about the chakras, I actually recommend going back to my webpage, which is at orograndeintuitivelife.org and using the light connecting meditation 
to just continually enhance the light connection through that space and expand your aura. Repeat statements like what would it take to know and be fully supported by the universe? What would it take to be grounded here and now? What would it take to always be connected to light and source? And clear those things that you see as blocks within your space. If you would like my personal help to walk you through clearing your auric, auric fields and, and chakras, please schedule a session with me at my site. Um, go to uh, my booking or scheduling sections. Again, I'm Colleen Bergeron, an intuitive life coach, and I would love to help.